The up level is that transformation period where you are starting to become a new version of self. What is so crucial to manifestation sticking is that we allow for a full integration period. This is three steps forward, not two steps back. From To Be Magnetic, this is The Expanded Podcast with your host, Lacey Phillips. And your host, Jessica Gill. As the leading destination for neural manifestation, we dispel the woo-woo in order to help you create real, tangible results based on neuroplasticity, psychology, epigenetics, and energetics. Our goal is to normalize the practice of manifestation and empower you to get into the driver's seat of your life in order to manifest the experiences, relationships, and things that most align with your authenticity. And by pressing play, the process begins. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Expanded. Jessica here. So today we are diving into everything up level and how to process and integrate and regulate your nervous system when you are doing this unblocking work. So you just manifested. Now what? How do you hold this space of the up level? This is sort of an energetic period that happens when we call in a big manifestation, something that really just knocks us into that next level of self. Here are some of the common themes that may come up when you've manifested something really big into your life. Your nervous system may feel dysregulated. You might be feeling afraid that you're going to lose what just came through. There might be a little bit of grief for your former sense of self or something from the past. Old friendships and relationships start to not feel as aligned anymore. Other people's shadows, fears, envy, or projections might start to surface. You might feel a little misunderstood in this new space, perhaps even lonely and isolated. You might be feeling guilt for something that you had only once dreamed of that now is yours. You're feeling in between two worlds and sort of needing to sit in this new space. And you're expanding your aura. This is a feeling of, wow, am I ready to hold more? I'm already holding more. I feel the pressure and intensity of all of this new energy coming at me. How can I expand my aura, my nervous system to hold the space of this bigger thing that is dropping in to me? So that is everything we're going to dive into the episode today. Janelle and Lacey have a lot of good tips on it. And one of the things we talk about a lot is this idea of integration. How do we integrate? And if you don't know what that means, we're going to cover it in the episode. But stay tuned for a little protocol of some of the best things you can do when you're navigating an up level, little summary, if you will, at the end. And feel free to come back here anytime you are facing an up level or anytime that a manifestation has come through. I hope you guys enjoy this one. And now a word from our partners. I am so excited to share with you guys our latest podcast partners, Enema Mundi Herbals. Their founder, Adriana, is a rainforest herbalist, medicine maker, and educator. And she was born in Costa Rica, extensively studied the healing traditions alongside master herbalists and shamans for 13 plus years. She started this company as a means to bridge the ancient remedies and bring them into the modern world. Even the name Anima Mundi translates into the soul of the world, representing the intelligence of the universe. They are a sustainably sourced, certified organic, wild crafted apothecary that creates herbal remedies and tinctures for your well being. They source all of their ingredients from honest farmers, wild crafters, and indigenous people when possible to really alchemize and creating that high vibrational medicine, mind, body, and soul while preserving the ancient forms of indigenous botany. And let me tell you that really shines through in the quality and effectiveness of their products. I've been trying a plethora of different things from them. This is kind of like the apothecary of my dreams. It's a one-stop shop that has a million and one different products for any ailment or tincture or support in your nervous system, in your body, in your soul, in your spirit. And the quality is just so good. So here are a favorite that we're loving over here at TBM right now. 
their Relax Tonic, which is for nervous system support. So this has lemon balm, passion flower, chamomile, ashwagandha, and lavender. It tastes incredible and it supports your nervous system, helps relieve stress and anxiety, helps with restful sleep, adaptogenic. This is like the best thing to take at the end of a work day to say the day is over, we can now relax. It has been so helpful. I take it after work, sometimes before bed, or even like in the middle of the day, there's no groggy feeling from it at all. It's just a total body nervous system relaxation. So, so perfect right before you do a DI as well. It really helps drop and calm your body so you can drop into that hypnotic state even deeper. And then the other thing that I'm loving and Lacey is loving, she's been putting in all of her smoothies. She can't say enough good things about this product is their rose powder. It is high in inhale antioxidants. It helps support blood purification in your cardiovascular system. It reduces inflammation, especially around your eyes and skin. It helps reduce wrinkles, slow the aging process. And what I love it for is it's a heart opener. It increases the connection between self and others by opening the heart. And this is what I particularly use it for. So on those days where I'm feeling just like, a little sharp around the edges. I feel irritated by almost everything and I'm just in one of those moods. I will take the rose powder and it just calms me down and drops me back into my heart, noticing the beauty around me and able to just kind of see things through a different lens. That's why they say the rose colored glasses because rose helps you see things and the world through a sense of beauty and connection. They have so many more items on here. I can't wait to see what speaks to you guys and we have an incredible discount with them. You can use the code TBM25 to receive 25% off your order. That's correct. TBM25 for 25% off. Now they have some incredibly priced items as well. So this is a huge steal. We are so excited to be working with them. So honored to be sharing their products with the world. And I know you guys are going to love it. Please let me know what speaks to you. Check out the link in the show notes where you can find all of the products or you can go to animamundiherbals.com and then just put in the code TBM25 at checkout. All right, on to the episode. So today we're exploring everything that happens after you are expanding, unblocking, you take aligned action. Finally, your major manifestation comes through and now your nervous system's on the fritz. You're freaking out. You're going to lose the manifestation. Or maybe you're just getting used to holding the space of this brand new energy or manifestation. This is going to be your protocol. So welcome Lacey and Janelle. Thank you. Hi. And maybe you're also someone who's so far from that, but you have this to look forward to. Because I know when you first start this process, you're like, what? That's happening to people, you know, and it it is and it will, you know, if you really dig in and you do the work, you will, you will one day know what this energy feels like because it sounds, it just sounds big and it sounds wild. And a lot of people might be feeling like, will I ever have that? So you will trust me. One thing I've noticed too is because the up level can feel intense sometimes that people don't even recognize that they just had their manifestation come through. Mm -hmm. Like they will look back and be like, yeah, that thing happened, but like I'm feeling tested and triggered. So it couldn't have been the whole thing. Right. And it's like, no, that could have been your thing that you were manifesting or you got to the next step or next level in your life. You're just needing some integration on the other side of it. So an up level can also point to a missing manifestation too. Another thing I want to say about a misconception that can happen in this up-level experience, I had a friend who messaged me. She's been doing this work so consecutively for the last year, and she, over the holidays, manifested this relationship that was everything on her list. And in this voice note on Instagram, she was like, but it was my biggest test ever because he he just last Sunday, he ended it because he realized he doesn't want children. And I was like, what? No, this isn't your biggest test ever. A, this is a humongous up level. And B, he was your biggest expansion ever. He was your bridge manifestation. So because there's so many nuances in manifestation, I'm excited we're having this conversation so that people don't misconstrue like you're saying Jessica when you are in this major up-leveled experience because of old self-worth wounds that will convince you otherwise you know and so I really had to reframe that for her I was like wait a second 
He was everything on your list as you were his, but he discovered through the process he didn't want this key thing that's, you know, really key need of yours. That is a bridge manifestation. <laughs> that is an up level. This is three steps forward, not two steps back. I love, love, love that you named that. So for anyone new tuning in, an up level is the phase in which you have just manifested something big or you have grown your self-worth so significantly that the way that you're operating with things around you is significantly different. Some common themes that can come up during that up level phase when something really big happens in their life, you can feel dysregulated. Your nervous system can be like, whoa, what is going on here in this new level of self-worth or with this new manifestation? You might be afraid to lose what has just come through. You might have a bit of grief coming through for a former sense of self or what's happened in the past, like a former version of you. Old friends and relationships might not feel as aligned anymore. You're now this new person. You've grown your self-worth so much. And now you're not really relating to old friendships and dynamics. Other people's shadows, fear, envy, and projections sometimes surface because now you've grown up here and they're like, wait a second, what what are they doing up there? They're supposed to be down here with me. You might feel misunderstood or lonely. You might feel even guilty that you have this nice thing that you've always dreamed of. You've been in longing of a big manifestation forever. And now that you have it, you're like, oh, like I feel so guilty that I have this and maybe not all my friends have it or whatever that dynamic is. You might be feeling in between two worlds, like you're kind of needing to just sit in the gray as you're like expanding. And this is one thing that you had mentioned, Lacey, of like expanding your aura to hold more. You just stepped into this whole new phase and it's like allowing yourself and your subconscious and your self-worth to take up more space, to step into that new dynamic, to not settle for the things that you would have before. So it comes with the most magical stuff. And it's so important to name that you might have all of these other things glimmering through when you're there too. Absolutely. Janelle, how have you seen up levels, especially with through the psychology lens of when people have big things come through in their life? Like what themes and things do you see happen? Yeah, so I'm, you know, deep in my somatic experiencing halfway through my three-year somatic experiencing program and geeking out hard on everything and learning so much. It's fascinating. But basically how I see it in relation to manifestation is that essentially like our nervous system goes from one energy well to a bigger energy well. When we move, our nervous system has to hold more feeling, sensation, dynamic, whatever. It is what you named is exactly right. It's very disorienting at first. And what is so crucial to manifestation actually sticking is that for post-up level, we allow for a full integration period. If we don't allow for full integration period, it's like a rubber band effect and we'll go right back to where we were. So if somebody up levels in their career, let's say they have some big shining moment and they are like, but I got to keep manifesting. I got to keep going. I got to keep going. Got to keep going. And they don't allow for integration for what they just, what their nervous system is holding. You'll go back to square one. There's a study with Olympians and how in order for them to build muscle and adaptability and skill, they have to build a little bit and then they have to integrate and rest. And then they build and they challenge and then they rest. And then they challenge and they rest. And as they do that process, their capacity gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So our resiliency of our nervous system, if we don't allow for integration, it won't stick. I mean, this isn't just about up-leveling too. This is also about the work we're doing in manifestation. And subconscious work. That's like 100%. what you're describing for unblocking is, is yeah. expansion is so important. Exactly. So for example, honestly, the manifestation challenge, that is a, literally a challenge You are working out, it's like a HIIT workout. You're doing a big intensity, which is good. And 
if there's no integration on the other side of that challenge, this work won't stick. It's critical. It's crucial. It's not just like, oh, rest, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, the integration period is absolutely critical for any bigger, 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 bigger states that we go to. I mean, whether it's a manifestation challenge, whether it's intensive therapy, whether it's doing an intensive with me, whether it's honestly like plant medicine ceremonies or like a pasanas, or sometimes people will go in and it's too much and then they'll flatline. There's no integration post whatever the challenge is, you won't grow. Also on the flip side, there's some people where they're just in that kind of more like coddling. They're nurturing a lot of nurturance, but they're not also doing the, the challenge, right? And then there's also no expansion there either. So it really has to be a really conscious understanding of challenge and rest and challenge and rest. And so back to up-leveling, how we hold that up-level well is because we've allowed for sufficient integration for our nervous system to catch up. Then we hold it. And then we, when we go on, like, honestly, I'm in an integration right now. Last fall, you know, got back with my partner, moved in together. We're now like blending with a three with my son. We've got this, you know, beautiful new home. And it was disorienting, right? To arrange to the new, the new energy. I've passed that phase and now I'm like, okay, I'm, let me just integrate all these changes. And I can feel myself as time goes on more and more and more settled. And I can now see I'm going to have the energy and the capacity for my next push pretty soon. I can feel it. Lacey, even with your pregnancy, you're going to go, you're home, you're going from three to four. That is major, major up level. And there is a natural, normal disorientation phase for any new mom, no matter how many kids you have. And then there has to be that postpartum downtime. There has to be the integration to then have the system hold and the parents to be regulated, right? If they just push right, right too quick, they're dysregulated and the system can't hold well. 100%. Creating a lot of space for that. A lot. I mean, even thinking to our challenges, there's a reason we have them at the end of the year. We have space in between, and then we have them in the summer. There is a big push. You join in as you go, and you can, you know, pick up workshops that call to you. People are at different points, but really using those as the anchor for the push and then having that integration work in between. I remember in an episode, Dr. Tara talked about when you are syncing up new neural pathways and you're connecting new neural pathways in your brain, it's exhausting for your body. If you need to rest more, if you need to sleep more, you know, the sleep DI, the reset DI, more grounding work, breath work, like anything you can do to support your body, good nourishment, that is part of helping your brain create these new neural pathways of high self-worth, whether you're in and up level or just unblocking as well. But both Lacey and Janelle, what do you guys do to integrate? One great way is journaling and the science behind it more than just typing, but there's, there is something about pen to paper and journaling, feelings, thoughts, experiences allows for the work to sink in and to have legs. Journaling is a big one. Honestly, gratitude. You know, I'm not a big positive psychology person, but the practice of actual gratitude and reflection on your manifestation allows actually for integration. Mm -hmm. You're taking it in and letting it settle versus just being in that go, 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 go space is like deeply healing. And it, again, it allows for all the work you did to really be effective. So let's say you do some big, deep inner child work and there's this big push and a lot of awareness Without the downtime, whether it's journal or just true nervous system downtime, not doing work, gratitude, whatever it is, like allowing for that space, that work can't really stick. 
what I'm kind of hearing from you in terms of integration and how maybe people can start to think about it is I've always seen integration, like the visual two hands coming together. When you integrate with your shadow, you meet your shadow, and now you have created a new path forward instead of in separation. Or when you and your inner child integrate, it's like you're connected now and you have a new path forward together. And even with the manifestation, right? You and your manifestation are now connected and together you have a new path forward. And so what I'm hearing from you is like one of the ways to do that is to process all of the awareness, everything that you've brought up. So understanding, wow, I did that and these things happen or this came to the surface. Let me sit with that. It's almost like a learning technique. Like you can read a textbook in college or high school, highlight all the text. But then if you transcribe what you highlighted to a note card or something, that's when you're actually like, oh, okay, now it's like sinking deeper. It almost feels like a, a way to learn about yourself in a way that feels believable now going forward. Yeah. And I think to put it on the nose with manifestation and certainly neural manifestation, it's when we really allow new neural pathways to truly connect and to start overriding and and operating from that place. Like when I'm using integration a lot, that's what I'm referring to. So what I'm thinking, because I've never actually like sat and thought of like the essence and energetics of integration, because it abstractly just makes sense to me. It's basically overriding and creating new neural pathways while supporting yourself, your nervous system through these techniques in an effort to deepen and make sure that it sticks. That's how I see integration. When it comes to up leveling and a new manifestation, The first thing that's going to happen to someone, especially if you don't have a strong trust muscle in this process, meaning that you haven't manifested many big things so that when you are dysregulated and that new thing comes in and you're like, holy shit, how do I hold this space? Typically, if you have a strong trust muscle, you've you've done this a few times and that holy shit comes up, you're going to be able to remind yourself of these past experiences where it all works out and it's going to be fine and I have my tools. But if you don't have that, the very first thing that's going to come up is your greatest core wound. So mine is the rug's going to be pulled out from under me. It's the first thing that comes up every single time I have a big manifestation, but I have a strong trust muscle. So for me to to regulate and to get back into parasympathetic over and over and over again is much faster and easier because I have points of reference from past experiences. Mm -hmm. So like a big trigger came through and you're not getting stuck in on or off because you've done that slow building capacity to be able to hold it. So you tap in and then you go back into regulation and are able to be resource and resilient with that trigger. Can we go so far as to say applying to an up-level unblocking expansion in order to integrate, you need to regulate? A hundred percent. Yeah, I think nervous system regulation is really, it's a big buzzword right now. And I think we're all as a society trying to understand what what it really means. Like, what does it really mean? What does it really look like? It's fascinating, but resilient nervous systems are formed in childhood through attunement, connection, the co-regulation of a parent, and that felt sense of safety. Once that person feels safe, their nervous system gets bigger. They're, ha- they're able to hold more. They're able to have higher regulation and they build and build capacity to be with their, their own feelings and the feelings of other people. Some people, especially with early developmental trauma, they never got a baseline of felt safety. So their nervous system has been stuck on or off or both literally their whole lives. And sometimes it doesn't look like what we think. Somebody with like real deep chronic anxiety, their nervous system, they can be a wonderful human being. They can be a very self-aware human being. Doesn't make them not wise. It doesn't make them a bad person at all. But their nervous system is really stuck on, which is very painful, right? To live in that space where your nervous system stuck on or you're stuck off. There's so many ways to help get back into a place where you can build nervous system resiliency because that's the point. It's the, the point is to be able to integrate trauma in a way to help your nervous system build capacity to hold life's experiences. 
whether it's exciting big things or the hard, sad things. So we were able to hold and be a full human, right? And be with life without getting stuck in on or off. And so I think during an up level, some people are like, oh, this is way, this is so much for my system and my system just shut down or my system just went fully kicked up high. And like, how do I get my nervous system depending on that particular person's nervous system with their particular history? And there's so many various, you know, somebody has a very sensitized nervous system based off of different, honestly, health things or neurodivergence or a number of things, right? Where they just have way more sensitized nervous systems than the next person or their childhood traumas. And regarding the manifestation, where is my nervous system at? What does my nervous system need? What can I do to bring it back and integrate all this beautiful work I'm doing so I can hold it? So I'm sure you've heard the benefits of red light therapy. It can improve wound healing, reduce stretch marks, fine lines, wrinkles, age spots, improve facial texture, improve scarring, sun damaged skin. And it really works by stimulating the mitochondria in our cells. When it does that, it helps stimulate the collagen production, giving our skin its structure, strength, elasticity, and improves fibroblast production, which helps create the collagen and all the connective tissue that builds our skin, increases blood circulation, reduces inflammation in cells. And two incredible products that I've been using lately, if you've followed me on Instagram, you've seen this crazy looking mask that I've had on and it is the Bond Charge Red Light Face Mask. It is such an incredible product. It has red light and near infrared light directly positioned on top of your face. So you can just hook it on, put the Velcro in the back and it's a little controller you can pop in your pocket and walk around and go about your day. You can do it while you're doing the dishes or your morning routine or meditating and you just need it on for 10 to 20 minutes, three times a week minimum to see those significant results. I notice the weeks that I am consistent with it. I can notice a more glowing skin texture. It brings color back to my face. It helps support some of those fine lines, especially around my eyes and my forehead. And it's just such an incredible beauty hack. And Bond Charge just released their red light face wand. So if you are not ready to get the red light face mask just yet, you can get their little portable rechargeable red light wand that has bio microelectronics, sonic vibrations, heat, and red and near infrared light, which does a lot of the same things that the face mask does, but you can spot treat on your face. I've been using mine before getting ready for podcasts or whenever I'm doing my makeup and I almost like lightly push it on my face kind of like a gua sha and then go over any sunspots I'm working on or any areas with like fine lines or wrinkles and I'm noticing a pretty big difference and I only use it two or three times a week. So highly recommend that. It's at a much more affordable price point than the face mask. So if you're just looking to dip your toe into red light, highly recommend their face wand as well. And you can get 15% off if you use code MAGNETIC. That's all caps M-A-G-N-E-T-I-C and get 15% off. Again, that's code MAGNETIC, all caps M-A-G-N-E-T-I-C for 15% off. Check out the link in the show notes or go to bondcharge.com. Lacey, when you've been in those places where you're up leveling and it's felt like a big, like, okay, wow, I'm in this new space now. What are some tools or practices that you lean on to help support you in your integration? Yeah. I mean, the first thing I want to point to right away, because somebody's like, whoa, to integrate, we have to regulate. What does that mean? And that's exactly why we created those deep imaginings that you see in the daily practice at the top. This is really Janelle's work with us. You basically walked in and said, people have to regulate, you know? And so that's why we created those. So certainly I take to those and then resourcing, which is essentially that, but also it's, it's looking back at past experiences. That's one of the things that really helps me ground into holding all of that new space. So what happened when I manifested this? And it was like, holy shit. Oh my God. You know, and the last experience I've had with that was manifesting the farm in Mendocino. That normal inner child me who grew up living in seven different apartments by the time I was three with, you know, a mom and a dad who were so broke, basically navigating that 
my inner child kept coming forward. It was running the show over and over, like, this is going to get pulled away. What am I doing? What if I, what if I lose this? What if all of the rugs get pulled out from under me? And so for me, it's basically regulating. That's a big thing. And using my trust muscle, resourcing, like really checking out past experiences, how I've been okay when I've done that. And another big thing I do a lot like the rock bottom is I have to clear out all of the noise around me. Anyone who doesn't think it's a good idea, anyone who is causing me a lot of triggering experiences, activations at the moment, do the work on them and then create some space because I have to stay grounded. I have to stay strong. Walking is a really big piece for me. That's my moment of meditation and just really connecting with the earth. And I love these other techniques that you're talking about, like the simplicity of journaling. That's huge. That's humongous to just really get it all out. All of the stuff that's coming up and looping and looping. I feel like that's another huge form of helping to regulate, get it out of the head and the body and get it on paper and then go and do a safety eye. What about you, Jessica? Yeah, I really resonate with that. And I even feel it coming up when Daniel and I were trying to figure out what price point we were, what our budget was for this next move. Initially, I was like, okay, yeah, it'll just be like a little bit more than now. And then I was like, wait a second, we're at a totally different level. This is going to be a big move. We're going from like a much smaller place into like something that will feel like our first home. And even saying like, yeah, I, I'm looking at my budget. Okay. I can afford it. This is what it's going to look like. We can do this. We can set our budget at this place. There was almost an up-level moment in just acknowledging that and saying like, my budget is at this level. And there are some friends who are going to judge me for that, but I'm here now. I'm like looking at my, my income. Like this is, I'm okay to do this and needing to ground and needing to not let the inner child be like, what if this happens? What if this happens? Actually, the other episode that we had recorded recently on mirrors, having vision holders around, having friends that are like, Let me debunk that fear for you in two seconds, because if that happened, you could get a job doing this and you could make that money back doing this and open one income portal and you're covered. I was like, oh yeah. Okay, great, great, great. So it was like bolstering the true self-worth that I had stepped into and not letting the inner child come in and be like, are we sure we're okay with this in that phase? And of course, like walking, grounding, time alone is so important being in no one else's energy, not even the puppies, like just getting complete time alone and just seeing like, okay, what does my soul really feel like is this next level of safety? And it's always greater than what my inner child's level of safety feels like it is. Another thing I do, and people can just replace the, the word God with universe, but I sometimes have to clear everything out and just be with God. Like in every moment, I'm just like, no, I'm just going to be with God. I'm going to be with angels right now. I'm going to, I can't, I can't be on this plane in not in an an ungrounded way, not in a non 3D way, but in a way that's in complete trust and being taken care of. I mean, that's the safe person, right? Like the safety eye, having that moment to sit with that energy and just let it comfort you and wash over you and know that you're held. What I love too that you named as a tool that you do, Jessica, that I do as well is you face the worst case scenario, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's so helpful. I do that always. I could get this kind of job. I could open this income portal, blah, blah, blah. I think that is such a big, big tool in this work that's Mm -hmm. super important. And I think many people's core wound is the rug will get pulled out from under me. If that's your core wound, that's going to be an amazing tool for you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This work is worst case scenario. DI. A thousand percent. So there's a children's book I love on nervous systems and it's by Robin Goebel. I think it's called the like big baffling behavior book, understanding nervous systems. So what's fascinating, what you guys are naming, so she she is in a really cute way that we have like our owl brain, our regulated brain, and then we have our watchdog brain, high alert, high whatever, and then we have our possum brain, which is just completely shut down. And so what you guys are naming is you guys are like, I'm scared at first, and then my owl brain comes online, and I'm able to think clearly about what's happening here. And so for someone, if they're doing a DI and they get stuck and they're feeling really shut down 
or they're feeling really activated and their brain can't go to worst case scenario. It is too stimulating for them. They're just like dysregulated and they can't get back to the all brain. That's the cue to go back to the reset, get back in your body, do things that regulate you to get back in your owl brain and your owl brain will be able to get to all of these conclusions that, you know, you both are naming. It's like the owl brain is the higher self. It's the magnetic self. It's like your true essence and letting that come back online. Yes. I'm trying to think of any other phases where I've gone through where that up leveling has felt like, whoa, let me like hold the space of it. Lacey, you name this too. And Janelle, the impulse to want to keep going, the yeah. impulse to be like, okay, let me distract this discomfort of holding this new space with busyness or with doing or striving for the next goal. So I don't even have to think about how scary it is that I'm in this goal. And I just would invite anyone who feels that it's a, it's totally normal, but try to resist the urge to do that and just sit with what you have right now. Like do that trust muscle DI. Every time a manifestation comes in, pop that sucker on and solidify that experience for you. Really sit in all the newness of what has come through. That's going to help with your resourcing, that's going to help with your resiliency. That's going to help expand that rubber band because you are self-expanding in those moments too. Exactly. Yeah. When I think of the person who, and I've for sure been guilty of this, Same. who, <laughs> yeah, right. You, you, well, you're witnessing magic. Mm -hmm. you, you're like, holy shit. I, I just manifested my entire list, this big thing. Wow. It, it came through and it's like a high. Mm -hmm. You're like, I just have to keep going. I gotta, you know, and it's, <laughs> that's not from your magnetic self because mm -hmm. Your magnetic self, when you're in it, you're in your power. You are a regulated person. You are somebody who's not blowing in the wind and at a whim, you know? So I think that's a really important thing to say. By now, you're starting to get the feel for TBM. Maybe you've heard about our workshops and you're interested in manifestation, but you just don't have the time or energy to sit down and do self-help work. We totally get it. In fact, that's why we created The Daily Practice, which is our massive library of self-hypnosis tracks that you can do anytime without having to jump into a workshop. We call these tracks our deep imaginings or DIs. DIs are different than normal meditations because we designed them using a combination of self-hypnosis techniques, deep theta waves, EMDR informed tools and somatic experiencing, a fully loaded formula that is scientifically proven to help you clear your blocks and triggers on a subconscious level, giving you the power to actually create new neural pathways in your brain. So if your boss pisses you off, use our trigger DI. If you want to feel magnetic before a party or an important meeting, use the magnetic self DI. If you're feeling anxious or down on yourself or you need help making a decision, We've got a DI for all of these scenarios and more. You can get full access to the daily practice inside the Pathway membership, where you'll also get unlimited access to every workshop, tool, and offering from TBM. The tools in the Pathway membership will support you year round, whether you're in the worst, a rock bottom, or second worst, a rut, or feeling good and you wanna keep the magnetism going. In the Pathway, you'll effectively learn how to become your own manifestation coach, all for less than a dollar a day. So even if you're not ready to start a workshop, join the pathway and start rewriting your neural pathways now to create magnetism. Work through your triggers and get closer to your authentic magnetic self in order to manifest. Use our special code MAGNETIC, all caps, M-A-G-N-E-T-I-C, to receive $20 off your first TBM purchase. Again, that's all caps, MAGNETIC. Now back to the episode. Talk a little bit about that phase because a, a lot of people write in on this of that sort of loneliness or friend drop off that happens in that up level. I think you've you've touched on it in a few supported in old podcast episodes, Lacey, but for anyone new listening, what is going on there? Explain to people what energetics is taking place. Yeah. So basically when you start really doing this work and unblocking and 
setting boundaries is a really big piece of aligned action. You're going to find, you know, it's jumping off cliffs, it's passing tests. And, and then you start to realize you're elevating. You just are naturally, your consciousness is elevating, you're elevating and the role that you used to play in old dynamics is, is shifting. So what's going on there is that, you know, the analogy we always give, it's like you were a crab in a small shell and you are manifesting this bigger shell. And in the in-between, you don't fit in any shells. And it can be so lonely, so hard, so confusing. And it doesn't happen every time you're manifesting. In fact, I find that this happens more in the beginning because the more that you integrate and come back to your authentic, whole, worthy self, since it's not something outside of you, it's actually something that lives inside of you. You're peeling away the onion layers many things start to fall off. Friendships fall off. Loves fall off. Things fall off. And it is very, very lonely. It's a very lonely period for people. I love those periods (laughs) because I know, it's again, I'm resourced in it. I know amazing things are coming. I have a really strong trust muscle for it. But when you're new to it, and you're really doing it, it can feel, especially if it's in the winter, <laughs> it can feel really lonely and really uncomfortable and, and sad. But to know that all that's happening there is you're in a major up level and you're getting very close to a manifestation. If you don't have the tools of this work or haven't been in this work and that was just happening to you, I think that would be a really, really uncomfortable place for someone. They would not know what's happening. Their world's falling apart. You know, so I'm, I'm grateful that there are these energetics and community to support that. And I think absolutely everybody who really does this work goes through it at one point. And it's also like, don't rush that phase because you're still integrating all the pieces of who you are. So if you're going to call in more aligned friendships or relationships or whatever, do that once you've already integrated everything, do that as you're integrating it, you can still be kind of calling it in the same time, but could manifesting those new friendships too quickly after that big up level and all the drop off, not give you time to integrate your old ones and, and process your old ones and what happened there too. So allow for that loneliness because that can also be that reflection integration point. Yeah. One thing that I don't know why this like visual keeps popping into my head, but of the default neural pathway. And I think this up level and everything that you're talking about in the nervous system, Janelle, like it all goes back to that default neural pathway. Like when you are moving from a limiting belief to something that is in high self-worth, you're pruning the old pathway, you're utilizing it less, you're taking action, doing the subconscious work, finding expanders to create that new neural pathway. And then it's created and then you manifest and then you have to keep using that same neural pathway to strengthen it. So it becomes the automatic neural pathway. So even just in your brain, thinking about like you were on this ski slope and now you, you created a whole brand new ski slope, you've defined it. And now it's going to become like the best, smoothest ride because you've used it so many times in your actions in your subconscious work in your expansion, you're hitting it again and again and again, allow time for that to deepen and enjoy that new neural pathway, because that is going to be such a game changer in so many pillars of your life, not even just the place that you manifested. Completely. Absolutely. I think the biggest takeaway as you're listening, the up level is that transformation period where you are starting to become a new version of self. You are in a higher level of self-worth. You've manifested something big. You are operating at, I mean, they always say like frequencies and old school manifestation. Like this is your new frequency that you're operating at. It's normal to feel dysregulated. It's normal for it to feel lonely, that you might lose things. Like your inner child wounding may start to come up during that phase that's okay. Just allow the space to integrate. And what we mean by integrating is to have a moment to reflect on everything that came through, have a moment to regulate your nervous system, calming it, breath work, everything in the calming DI section, and have a moment to really process and honor this new version of self. Be your own expander. Create that trust muscle that when you do this work, wow, this is who I am now. I didn't even think that was possible. Little inner child me didn't even think that this was possible. And I'm here. That is so cool. 
and take those moments to do that because that allows you to hold more and more and more. And don't rush the process. If you need breaks, if you need time to integrate, take that, do that, and then go back out like Janelle was saying and have that challenge. But then come back and have the integration and go back out and have the challenge. And know that it only lasts, in my experience at least, it only lasts about two weeks or so. I mean, yeah. things might re-trigger it a little bit or certainly if you're continuing the up level, other things might fall off, tests might happen, you know, that are going to re-trigger those things. But for the most part, for me, it's like a week, two weeks, and, and I start to really uh, have a stronger, wider nervous system to hold this new space. And it feels so good once you've integrated in that new space. You're like, oh, wow, this is so expansive. It feels great. Yeah. And that's why it's so fascinating with old manifestation techniques when they're like, you're just in the positive focus on love. You're like, what in the fuck? (laughs) Are you kidding? The real manifestation journey is such a human experience. The full spectrum of emotion and experience. There is... No, just staying in a vortex. <laughs> like mm-hmm. you are, you're in a video game. You really are in a video <laughs> game, and you're the main character, and you have all of these tools or your little, you know, tools to navigate it with. Thank you both so much. So much wisdom in this one, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. hope you guys enjoyed that episode and I just wanted to give a little summary to leave you guys off with of what you can do when you face an up level. Number one, the top thing, the first thing you really got to look at is your nervous system. How can you ground? How can you get back into a state of regulation so you can hold all the newness that is going to expand with your aura? So all the calming deep imaginings in our daily practice library, the sleep DI, the reset DI, the safe DI. Even on our Instagram, we have a little highlight with grounding techniques from Janelle. Is it breath work? Is it movement? Is it out in nature? What can you do even five minutes a day to just say, okay, I'm going to take a breath and just sit with this new space and let it move through me and integrate. Two, sleep and rest. Massive, massive thing. If you think about an up level, it means that you were operating on old, low self-worth beliefs in your brain, and now you are operating on high self-worth loops in your brain. That means you've created neuroplasticity in the brain, you're operating in a new pattern in your brain. That's a lot of work for your brain. So it needs a lot of time and support to rest. Especially this is true as well when you're in the deep unblocking work. Support your brain. It is working on overdrive. Nourish it, eat nourishing foods, and make sure to prioritize sleep during this time. Three, redo your authentic code. You're in an up level. You just manifested something fantastic. You have changed. You've entered a new paradigm, a new reality, your values, your authentic code. They may have changed too. So see what's aligned and what isn't aligned at this new level of self. And four is to integrate. So that can look like a bunch of different things. Janelle really hammered home the importance of integrating. And what that can look like is essentially a sacred moment of pause where we're not adding anything new. We are just taking a conscious look at what has transpired thus far. So integration could look like doing the trust muscle DI where you sit with this new manifestation that just came through and feel all the feelings you feel about it. Integration can look like journaling journal about this new chapter that you're in, process all the lessons you learned, maybe even process some of the grief you have over your past self, your past home, job, relationship. If you're in relationship now, then of being single, how can you really reflect on the previous things so you can create more space for the new? And one last thing I want to say on this is if you are in that chapter where you're in between friend groups and you're feeling kind of lonely or you're operating at a new level now, and that means you had to disconnect from some of the people or places that you used to connect with for comfort and support before, and you're trying to navigate where you're going to lean on those people for support, or maybe you left a relationship and that person that you'd go to in those hard times just isn't there in the same way. 
Develop your new support system. Give yourself a little bit of time. A, feel your feelings if you're lonely. Feel your feelings DI. Feel the grief DI or the letting go DI rather if you're feeling any of that come up. But then also start to curate your new support system. If you're operating at a new level of self, take some time to think about who you are now, what you need now, and what kind of people you want to have surrounding you and who can support you at this new level. Up levels are amazing. They're magnetic. They're so powerful. And this little up level period doesn't last for very long. Humans are so adaptable that we start operating on the new frequency rather quickly. But if you are having difficulty going through it, you are not alone. We are with you. And it really is a magnetic and potent time. Okay, we'll see you guys next week. Bye.